we are asked to determine an equation of the given graph using the cosine function. We will determine the equation in the form y equals a times cosine of the quantity bx plus c plus d, where the absolute value of a is the amplitude, two pi divided by b is the period, negative c divided by b is the phase or horizontal shift, and d is the vertical shift. Because we are using the cosine function to determine the equation, we need to remember that over one period, the basic pattern of the cosine function is maximum, midline, minimum, midline, and maximum. Of course, if there's a reflection across the midline though, the pattern would be minimum, midline, maximum, midline, and minimum. So going over to our graph, let's highlight one period of the given cosine function. Notice that x equals negative 1.5, we have a maximum. So let's begin by focusing on the graph starting at x equals negative 1.5. And then notice we have one complete graph of this cosine function if we go all the way out to positive 8.5, which is here. So by focusing on this piece of the graph, we can determine a possible equation. And because we begin with a maximum, we will not have a reflection across the midline, and therefore a is going to be positive. If there's a reflection across the midline, a is negative. And because the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of a, and the amplitude is a distance from the midline to a maximum, or the distance from the midline to a minimum, let's identify the amplitude. We'll notice the distance from the midline here to this minimum, which is negative three, is three units, and therefore we know a must be positive three. And also because the midline again is the x-axis or y equals zero, there is no vertical shift and therefore d is zero. And now let's determine the value of b by using the formula two pi divided by b is equal to the period. We'll notice how the horizontal distance from negative 1.5 to positive 8.5 is 10 units and therefore the period is equal to 10, which means two pi divided by b must equal 10. To solve for b, let's multiply both sides by b. Simplifying, we have two pi is equal to 10b, and now we divide both sides by 10. Simplifying, we have b equals 2 tenths pi, which simplifies to 1 fifth pi, or pi over five. So now we know b is equal to pi over five. And now let's determine c using the formula negative c divided by b is equal to the phase shift. We normally start graphing the cosine function along the y-axis, but notice this graph is shifted left 1.5 units, which means negative c divided by b must equal negative 1.5. Again, the graph is shifted left 1.5 units, and therefore negative c divided by b is equal to negative 1.5, or as an improper fraction, negative 3 halves. So now we know negative c divided by b must equal negative 3 halves. It's easier to work with a fraction rather than the decimal. And we know b is pi over 5, which gives us negative c divided by pi over 5 is equal to negative 3 halves. To solve for c, the first step is to multiply both sides by pi over 5. Simplifying, this simplifies to 1, giving us negative c is equal to negative three pi over 10, and therefore positive c is equal to positive three pi over 10. And now we have all the information we need to form a possible equation of the given graph using the cosine function. One possible equation is y equals a, which is three times cosine of the quantity bx plus c plus d, which gives us pi over five x plus 3 pi over 10, and we don't need d because d is zero. This is one possible equation for the given graph. To show this equation is not unique, let's also form a different equation using a reflection across the midline, and therefore we'll now highlight a piece of the graph where we're starting with a minimum function value rather than a maximum. Let's say this time we start at x equals 3.5, which is here. Notice that x equals 3.5 we do have a minimum function value of negative three. Now moving to the right, we don't have a graph of one complete period of the function in this direction, but as long as we can determine the period, which we already know is 10, we can still use this piece of the graph 
to determine the equation. Again, the amplitude is still positive three, but now because the pattern is minimum midline and maximum, then midline and minimum, we do have a reflection across the midline, and therefore the amplitude is still positive three, but A is negative three because of the reflection. So we know A is equal to negative three now. There's still no vertical shift, and therefore D is still zero. And because the period is still 10, we know B is still pi over five, but because the phase shift has changed, the value of C will change. Notice if we start here, the phase shift or horizontal shift is now right 3.5 units or seven halves, and therefore negative C divided by B must equal seven halves. And again, it's easier to use a fraction rather than a decimal. So negative C divided by B must equal positive seven halves, again, because the shift is right 3.5 or seven halves units. We know B is pi over five, which gives us negative C divided by pi over five equals positive seven halves. Again, multiply both sides by pi over five. Simplifying, this simplifies to one, giving us negative C is equal to seven pi over 10, and therefore positive C is equal to negative seven pi over 10. And now we can use these values for A, B, C, and D to determine a different equation that will give us the same graph. A second possible equation using a negative value for A is Y equals negative three times cosine of the quantity BX plus C, which is pi over five X, and then plus negative seven pi over 10 can be written as minus seven pi over 10, and again, D is zero. So both of these equations will produce the same graph shown below. I hope you found this helpful.